four. Let us all read together. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophet in the Holy Scripture regarding his son who, as to his earthly life, was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God empowered by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May all of our Hana Church members receive the blessing of living with Christ. I'm not living with Christ. Christ dwells inside of me, and that itself is a blessing. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you always confirm this and enjoy this inside of your field. A teacher gave this one homework. So he asked, she, or the teacher asked, the five, what is the five oceans and the six continents? So the daughter asked the father and wrote down the answer. And pr very proudly, she gave the homework to the teacher. And she was scolded at by the teacher. So this daughter had resentment against her father and asked, why did you give me the wrong answers? So what the father said, what is the five ocean? It is the, the told about the very popular last names of Korea. And the daughter asked, why did you tell me the wrong answers? And what the father said was more funny because the father said, oh, it wasn't that drink, it was another drink. We must take a look at our lives and what are we holding on to as we live on? There are many people who think of the gospel with their own st a state and their own st or level. And many of the non-believers say to the church believers, the church goers that they if they drown in water they only the lips of the Christians will be floating on the water and they're saying that because the Christians don't live by their word and they just only speak the word and the non-believers just take a look at view Jesus as the four great adults. So they respect Jesus, thinking that he's a renowned person, and that is why the non believers say that he's the four renowned people, one of the four renowned people. And same for the church be believers. When they go to church, why are they falling into discouragement? And they are always discouraged because they think that they do, the problems that they are faced with is not being solved. All of these people are losing hold of the essence of the gospel. If you see Mark 7, 7, it says, The worship me, 
in vain their teaching are merely human rules. So Jesus is saying this to the Pharisees. What does it mean by their teachings are mere, merely human rules? They're inside of misconception, thinking that if they heed to the teachings of merely human rules, they are living the right, correct walk of faith. But if we lose heart of the essence, we cannot walk the walk of faith. But if you are concerning about and thinking about the essence, everything else will follow. If you see Mark, Matthew 6, 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. If you think and concern holding on to the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, then everything else will follow. But we do not think of the essence and we do not hold on to the essence. We are so interested in the things that are not the essence. Jesus asked the disciples, Who do people say I am? And the disciples tell Jesus how people think about Jesus. Some people say you're like Elijah. And some people say John the Baptist. And some people say Jeremiah. And some people say one of the prophets. That is not the essence. Those are all of the non, uh, what is not the essence. The people, words of the people is just like sound in the wilderness. But so many people are so interested in the words of people. They don't listen to the word of God, but they're always listening to the public opinions which is not the essence. You must believe that we, can, we ha must have consideration of the words of people, but we must hold on to the word of God. And religion, the good deed, they're doing good deeds, that is not the essence. Elijah was the person who brought fire from heaven. Yes, he had power, but that itself is not the essence. People who do idol worship, they also show some kind of miracle and power. And living with ethics and morals, that's all good, but that itself is not the essence. And the church is moving, are doing some kind of many programs. But without them knowing, the church members are all growing weary. If churches are doing some kind of program, then at first it might seem that they're following you, but later on they will lose their strength. Yes, we can have many programs inside the church. I'm not saying that it's not needed, but that is not the essence. Yes, we need Bible study. But the Bible study that lost hold of the covenant will just bring us more confusion. We must hold on to the essence. When we say we, the essence, we are talking about the things that is absolute. Oh, we can do this or not. That's not the essence. If we are doing the things that we, we can do and we don't have to do, then we will later on crumble down. The fundamental is the essence. 
That is why we must not hold on to the outer shells. Many people in Korean churches are leaving the church. Before they even come to the realization of what is the essence, they, because of people and because of the atmosphere, the younger generations are leaving the church. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you have the blessing of restoring the essence first. If you just remain inside of the essence, and if you just enjoy the essence, then everything else, God will lead us. If you're inside of the essence and are enjoying the essence, then my weaknesses and my powerlessness is, it, it doesn't matter. So what is the essence of the gospel? So our first mission is going inside of the gospel. Then what is the essence of the gospel? The love of God is the essence of the gospel. Grace of God is the essence of the gospel. And the mercy of God is the essence of the gospel. Um, through the mercy of God, we receiving salvation. That is the essence of the gospel. John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world. What kind of world is this? It is the world, the incident of Genesis 3, being separated from God. And we had no choice but to perish. But he loved that world and gave his one and only son. Why did he give us his one and only son? Inside of the perishing world, he didn't want us to perish. That is why he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Gospel is the love of God. First John 4 9 it says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. How did the love of God re reveal to us? He sent us his one and only son. Sending His one and only Son, He revealed the love of God, and that we might live through Him. And in verse 10, it says, "This is love." Not that we love God, but that He loved us. We thought that we, I loved God, and that is why we went before God, but that's not it. God loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So sending us Christ is the love of God. And the gospel is the grace of God. In Romans 3, 24, it says, And all are justified free by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So what is the grace that it says here? I have no right to receive salvation but one-sidedly, God gave us salvation. And Calvin said, we have, we are totally corrupted 
but God loved us and has chosen us. So we are in total a corruption. That is why without the grace of God, our lives are meaningless. But He didn't uh, see our conditions, but unconditionally, He saved us. And He called us righteous. In the name of Christ, He has called us. So that is why the essence of the gospel is the grace of God. In Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. We didn't receive salvation because we did some kind of good deeds. Through Christ, God has given us salvation. And third, it is the mercy of God. Ephesians 2.4 he says, but because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy. What is mercy? It means that God until the end forgives us and until the end he waits for us. And that is the mercy of God. As we live on today, if we uh, commit sins, then we must have payment of that sin. And so we, in one day, have to die many times. But God has mercy upon us. That is why officially in Ephesians 2 5, says, made us alive with Christ. So the, the standard of the mercy of God is Christ. That is because why does God have mercy upon us? It is because Christ dwells inside of us. So having Christ dwell inside of us, we have received the mercy of God. Mankind cannot solve their own sin problems. They cannot break free from the problems of sin and Satan. That is why He has sent us Christ to set us free from sin, curses, and all of the problems. And has restored the image of God in Genesis 1:27-28 and has given us eternal life. In John 11.25, the resurrection and the life, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Jesus said that he has given us eternal life. And following that was given true freedom. In John 8.32 it says, It is a solution to all problems. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. God has, uh, Christ has opened up the way to meet God. And Christ has opened up the way to receive life inside of death. And inside of Him, there is true freedom. We must be set free from all of our unbeliefs by all the trials that I have received and from my past. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. As we walk our walk of faith, we may have many uh, things that occur inside of our lives. We can have conflicts inside of the church and we might have many concerns. 
We may have many problems, but we must find the answer. Gospel is life and power. The problems that I'm faced with, the conflicts, the answer there is the gospel. The only thing that can solve your problems and the conflict, it is life and power. And all of the problems, all of the conflicts that you're faced with, the solution is inside of Christ, who is life and power. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you enjoy this inside of your lives. And secondly, so what is the core of the gospel? We speak about the gospel then we must know the essence of the gospel. And then what is the core of the gospel, the content? We are always speaking of the gospel. We keep on saying gospel and gospel, but what is the essence of the gospel? Then what is the content, the core of the gospel? What is the core of the gospel? Is Jesus is the Christ. And Christ is the solution to all of our problems. And that is why we, the reason that we live is for world evangelization. Jesus is the Christ. Christ is the solution to all of our problems. And the reason why we live is for world evangelization. We all know this. We are so educated in this. We all know this. Who is Jesus? Christ. He is the solution to all of our problems. And I am the person who will do world evangelization. Everybody knows this. But when they are faced with the conflict, they wonder. We go inside of the con concern of, I've listened to Christ, but what kind of relation do I have with Christ? Because we have no relation. That is why we are faced with limitations. We are faced with limitations, but that limitation doesn't just come. The thing that we are educated with, it must become ours, but because we because that hasn't become ours, that is why we are faced with conflicts. But the conflict that we are faced with to the people who know what the gospel is, it is the time of where they are able to confirm the gospel. The Israelites came out of Egypt holding on to the covenant and it was a time where they're confirming the gospel. It was a time schedule when they were able to confirm the gospel that they held on to. So they're faced with the Red Sea and the army was chasing after them. And that was all of the chance where they're able to confirm the gospel. But we must have the strength to confirm the gospel at that time. So when we bow down to God and receive the power of God, then we are able to experience the gospel and confirm the gospel. But because we do not have the power, we are always faced with conflicts. All of the problems that we are faced with, it is a chance and the time schedule to confirm the gospel. God has called Abraham from Chaldea and has blessed him. I will give you blessings. So leave your father's household. And those who bless you, I will bless. And those who curse you, I will curse. And all nations will receive the gospel, receive blessing through you. 
and it was a great blessing. He held on to that covenant and came out, but what was he was faced with right away was famine. So Abraham was faced with a famine, and so where did, where did he go to? He goes to Egypt. And that is So we, when we're faced with a problem, we lose hold of the covenant and we only view the problem. Abraham must have said that, oh, God gave me this covenant, but I'm faced with the famine. So what will God do and what will he fulfill? But he didn't do that. And he went to Egypt and he almost lost his wife. Are we faced with problems? Or do you, are you faced with hardships? Or do you have concerns? To us who have received salvation, it is a chance to confirm the gospel. Abraham must have said that, oh, I'm faced with a famine, but how will God bless me through this famine? So we must hold on to the spiritual thing and go out. So receiving spiritual power is very important. When we have the spiritual power, everything we view will be different. And all of the conflicts that we are faced with, we're able to view it in a different manner. So we will say that, oh, let's hold on to the power of God and let's challenge it against it. And instead of that, we are able to confirm the power of God. There's no reason for us to concern about the problems and the hardships that we're faced with. We're not praying so that we can have this problem solved. Last week, we received a word. The people of the early church, they didn't pray for their problems to, or their persecution to be, uh, uh, to disappear. They were able to boldly proclaim the word of God inside of that problem. But we are always praying for this problem to be solved. God gave us that problem so that we can confirm the power of God, but we are always praying so that this problem can be solved. But if you see in the book of Daniel, he didn't pray for the problem to be solved. He went into the den of lions, but he was able to confirm and experience the power of God. He was the man of prayer. So he opened up the windows towards Jerusalem and prayed. What is, what is Jerusalem? It was the land where Christ will come and he held on to that covenant, the promise, and prayed. So Daniel had assurance in this. Bible is not some kind of knowledge. The Bible is telling us that uh, Christ will come and Christ has come. And Daniel held on to that and prayed. Because he had a covenant and he had that assurance, he, in thanksgiving, prayed. And we were able to see Job inside of the Bible. In one night, he lost 10 of his children, and he lost all of his belongings. And from head to toe, he was faced with this disease, and he was mocked at by people. 
But what did it confess? Who gives is God and and who takes away is also God. He didn't have some kind of mere hope that everything will get better later on. But he held on to the assurance of Christ. So I really hope for all of you to have the vessel prepared. And that vessel isn't anything else, but it is the assurance regarding Christ. So how much do we put the value inside of the essence of the gospel will determine our vessel. It's not because of my things, but because Jesus is Christ and he, he is the essence of the gospel. So what is true gospel? It is what God has promised ahead of time. If you see Romans 1, 2, the gospel he prom promised beforehand through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures. So in the Old Testament, God has promised that he will send us Christ. When Adam sinned against God, God showed him the way to meet God. And that was Genesis 3.15, the offspring of woman. Christ must come as an offspring of woman. So the meaning of offspring of woman that he has come without an original sin. All mankind are inside of the original sin and the value of that, the price of that sin is death. So a person with no sin has to come. That is why he is born of a Virgin Mary. So there is only one answer to be, receive salvation. The work of salvation, it is the essence of the gospel. There are many people who try to A look at the Bible in in literature. People like Shakespeare, but is Bible really a literature? And there are many people who look at the Bible in some kind of comforting word. But God didn't give us the Bible so that we are comforted by it. God has given us the Bible and it is promised beforehand in the Bible that He will send us Christ so that He can solve all of our fundamental problems. He already existed but He came in flesh. And we are able to see that in verse 3 today. Regarding his son who was the, to his earthly life was descended of David. So the creator God has come as a ransom. Why did it come? Why did it come in flesh? To give strength to those who are discouraged? Or is it to heal the, those who are sick. Yes, he did those things. But he didn't come just for that. He has come to do the work of Christ. And what is the work of Christ? In verse 4 it says, let us read together. And who through the Spirit of Holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by His re resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. So why did God come in flesh? He has come to do the work of Christ. And what is the work of Christ? 
He has come to die. Because the price of sin is death. But Jesus didn't die for his sins, but he died for our sins. I told you last week. He didn't just end with death. If, if he just died and ended, then we, there is no need for us to believe in Jesus. And as evidence of that he is Christ, he resurrected. So the death and the resurrection of Christ, Jesus was the work of God and has set us free from sin forever. And He is with us now. If Christ really lives in me, then just as our choir sang, we must live in Christ. So I p r a s in the name of the Lord, may you really have uh, enjoyment of, the, of Christ that dwells inside of you. Yes, we can be deceived in the words of people, but if you truly know what the gospel is, then we are able to have victory over that. Then, if, in conclusion, if Jesus is truly Christ, then this must become individualized. And if you see in verse 6 today, and you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. It says, you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. So this has become uh, personalized. If Jesus is the Christ, then we must receive all the answers through Christ. If Jesus has come to this earth because of me, then we must be able to truly acknowledge that He is Christ. If Jesus tr is truly is the Christ, then we must receive all of the answers of our lives inside of Christ. And doing that so, and having our past healed, it means personalization. When we are holding on to this, then without, regardless of our weaknesses, the power of God, the power of the gospel will be revealed inside of our fields. We haven't read today, but let us read Philippians 2 too. It is telling us how we must really enjoy, enjoy the gospel. Let us all read together. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love being one in spirit and one of mind. So this is a person who knows the value of the gospel. So same love being one in spirit and one mind. So do you know what the background of this passage? There was a very severe persecution to the early church. But later on, uh, this persecution deceased and they were able to see people. And later on, now you can see there was a conflict inside of the, Philippi, the church of Philippi. And that is why Paul sends the letter. Having the same love, being one in spirit and one uh, of one mind. So really, with the gospel, serve others. 
Are there people who are weak? See them with the eyes of the gospel and really serve them. Really holding on to the gospel, let us re- truly pray for them so that those people will come to the realization that, oh, he, oh, they really truly prayed for me and waited for me. So really think of Phil- Philippians 2.2. Having one mind is not easy. Even though we live in one house, we cannot have one heart. But for all of our believers to have one heart, it's not easy. And here, all of the forces of Satan will kneel down. So, I really hope that our church is filled with the gospel. So, if you see people who are weak, we can help those people. And if there are people who are in the midst of scars, then we can heal them and truly pray for that person. I bless you in the name of the Lord and may our Hana Church become the church where we really truly break down the forces of Satan and reveal the glory of God. Amen.